Welcome back. Today I'm going to explain the movie called The Proposal from 2009. If you like this video give it a thumbs up, and if you are new, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. In the opening scene, we see Margaret Tate get through her morning routine. Margaret Tate is a Canadian executive editor-in-chief of a New York book publishing company. Her assistant Andrew Paxton, after waking up late, hurriedly gets ready, gets coffee for his boss, and sprints to work. When he gets there he accidentally spilled her coffee, ruining a nice shirt he had on. Margaret while coming into work that morning is on the phone with Frank, one of her favorite writers. Margaret enters her office and her daunting and pushy personality disliked by most of her employees gets them all on their toes. Andrew who had traded expensive tickets with a co-worker to get into a new outfit greets her while giving her a cup of coffee. She tells him to get a hold of PR as Frank would be doing an interview with opera. Andrew gives a sarcastic comment. Before he leaves Margaret finds a lady's name with her number written on her cup of coffee which she asks Andrew about. Andrew explains that it was originally his cup but her cup spilled so that's why she's drinking his. Margaret asks if it's a coincidence they both drink the same kind of coffee, and he replies that it must be since he couldn't possibly think of drinking the same coffee as she does just in case her cup spills. Margaret goes to see Bob, and she tells him he's fired. She wanted him to get Frank to do opera but Bob shied away and refused to call Frank. Bob then storms out of his office abusing and slandering Margaret, he tells her she feels threatened by him. Margaret responds to him that she's firing him because of his incompetence and that she would get him out of the building with an armed escort and have it filmed and uploaded to YouTube if he should continue making trouble. In the next scene, Margaret learns from her superior chairman Brendan, that her visa renewal application, has been denied due to a visa term violation, and she faces deportation back to Canada for at least a year. Bergen tells her, operations would be handed over to Bob while she's gone. Not wanting to lose her position to Bob who she just fired, and her life in New York, she decides to tell her superiors that she would be marrying her much-abused assistant, Andrew. A confused Andrew stuck in an awkward situation just nods and agrees to everything his boss says. Brendan advised they both make it legal soon. Back at her office, Andrew asks that she explains what is going on. She reminds Andrew that if she is deported, the work he put in as her assistant would be lost, which will set back his dream to become an editor. U.S. immigration agent Mr. Gilbertson informs them that he suspects they are committing fraud to avoid Margaret's deportation. Gilbertson tells them that they will be asked questions about each other separately. If their answers do not match, Margaret will be deported back to Canada permanently and Andrew will be convicted of a felony punishable by a $250,000 fine and five years in prison. Andrew expresses that they are just two people who weren't supposed to fall in love but did. Mr. Gilbertson asks if their parents are aware of their secret love. Margaret says her parents were dead, but they would be telling Andrews' parents at the weekend when they visit for Gammy's 90th. Mr. Gilbertson asks where Andrew's parents were located. He replies, Sitka, Alaska. Andrew insists that Margaret makes him an editor after their marriage and publishes the book he has been recommending to her. Margaret is forced to agree. The couple travels to Sitka, Alaska, Andrew's hometown, to meet his family. Margaret faces a tough time through the journey, and Andrew is warmly greeted by his mom and grandma. Margaret meets Andrew's mother Grace and grandmother Annie, who they usually call Gammy. During the trip back to the family home, Margaret notices that nearly every shop in town carries the name Paxton and learns that Andrew's family is in fact very wealthy. Grace tells Margaret that they had their hotel reservations cancelled and they would be at the family home all through their trip. When they arrived Margaret is shocked to see the home Andrew grew up in. Grace and Annie had set up a welcome home party inviting 50 of their closest family and neighbors. During the party, Margaret reinforces how important it is that everyone thinks they are in love. Soon, Andrew confronts his father Joe, who is angry about Andrew dating the boss he has so long disliked and believes he is using her to get ahead in his career. After their argument, Andrew announces the engagement to everyone. While Margaret was questioning Andrew's timing for announcing their engagement. Gertrude, Andrew's ex-girlfriend comes over to greet Andrew, who's pretty excited to see her. Margaret also meets Gertrude. At the party when everyone asked about the proposal, they go back and forth formulating the story of how Andrew proposed to Margaret. Andrew and Margaret were both asked to kiss each other. After the kiss, they were both taken to the room they would sleep in for the night. The next day, Joe apologizes to Andrew for his rude first impression saying that the family had no idea they were dating. Joe wants Andrew back in Alaska to take control of the family empire cause he has plans to retire. Andrew tells his dad he wished he had another child, one that would take over the family business because what he does in New York makes him happy. Meanwhile, 
Grace and Annie take Margaret to a local bar as part of her bachelorette party to watch a strip dance by locally famous but over-the-hill exotic dancer Ramon. Stepping away from the show, Margaret learns from Gertrude that Andrew wanted to become an editor and make his own life and that Andrew had proposed to Gertrude. However, Gertrude refused because she did not want to leave Sitka for New York. When they get back from the bar they see Andrew using a hammer to dismantle a wooden canoe. Then Margaret learns of the conflict between Andrew and his father, Joe. Andrew comes into their room and is preparing to take a shower then Margaret runs out of the bathroom to get a towel. They bump into each other, and Andrew falls to the floor with Margaret on top of him. They both get into a heated argument. That night, Andrew teases Margaret about what had happened earlier, and she claims she does not wish to speak about it. Margaret asks Andrew about his relationship with his father, but Andrew refuses to talk. Instead, Margaret opens up to Andrew about her past. Next, Andrew compliments Margaret, telling her she is a very beautiful woman, which makes her smile. The next morning, Andrew's family does everything to convince them to get married while they are still in Sitka. When they leave the room Andrew expresses his fears to Margaret about his family finding out their affair was only set up for business reasons. Margaret tells him it's going to be fine, and they won't remain married for too long. She rubs his shoulders, and this makes Andrew become calm. She serves him breakfast, and jokes about how she wishes to learn to cook because she needs to keep her man happy so he doesn't go after another woman. She leaves after saying this. Getting on a bike and riding into the woods. Margaret starts hearing strange sounds, coming from within the woods. When Margaret checks out what is happening, she finds Gammy dressed in the woods performing what seemed like a ritual. Annie urges her to come and see how she gives thanks to Mother Earth. Margaret is forced to join her, and soon they start getting into something different. When Andrew finds them, he and Margaret both leave and take a boat ride to the city. Margaret once again runs into Ramon and is creeped out by him. Andrew takes Margaret to the cafe, then he sees Gertrude and goes to meet her. Margaret sees them talking together and later she asks Andrew if it was nice to see Gertrude today. Andrew answers, yeah, definitely it's been a long time. Annie and Grace steal Margaret away once more. They get her into Annie's grandma's bridal dress which looked nice but still needed adjustments. Margaret is reluctant to accept the gifts Andrew's family is bestowing on her. Margaret realizes how close and real Andrew's family is, and this moves her deeply, especially because of the deception. She gets on Andrew's boat and speeds away with him. She admits she has been alone since she was 16 years old after her parents died, and had forgotten what it felt like to have a family. She lets go of the helm and stumbles to the back of the boat. Andrew takes control of the boat and makes a sharp turn to avoid hitting a buoy and Margaret falls out of the boat. Andrew quickly turns the boat around and saves her because she cannot swim. After bringing her out of the water, Andrew helps her get warm. Meanwhile, a suspicious Gilbertson has turned up in Sitka ready to charge Andrew with fraud. Gilbertson and Joe have co-conspired a deal to keep Andrew from going to jail, on the condition he reveals his entire engagement as a fraud. Andrew reinforces that he and Margaret have been dating for six months prior to the engagement. At the wedding, a dazzling-looking Margaret walks down the aisle accompanied by Gammy. Ramon promptly starts the ceremony, but Margaret stops the ceremony by confessing the truth to the audience and Gilbertson. She tells them she forced Andrew to marry her by threatening his carrier, to prevent her deportation. She tells them she regrets her decision realizing how wonderful they are. Margaret returns to the Paxton home to pack her things. Andrew rushes to their room only to find Margaret has already left, leaving his book manuscript with a note of praise and a promise to publish it. Gertrude attempts to comfort Andrew and asks if he is going to go after her. Gilbertson informs her she has 24 hours to leave for Canada. As he rushes out to find Margaret, another argument arises between him and Joe. Annie suddenly shows symptoms of a heart attack, causing her and the family to be airlifted to the hospital and she convinces them to reconcile before she passes away. After she succeeds in getting things moving again, she admits to faking the heart attack as it was the only means to get their attention. And tells the pilot to head to the airport in hopes of catching up to Margaret. When he arrived Margaret was already on her way back to New York. Andrew's family realizes he really loves Margaret. He returns to New York and tells Margaret he loves her in front of the entire office staff. After they kiss, they go to Gilbertson and inform him that they are again engaged but for real this time. Gilbertson questions Andrew's family and friends which proves it. The movie ends here and you're welcome to share your thoughts on this movie in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and hit the like button to help us out. I'll see you in the next video, stay well, thanks.